Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Indusind Bank Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Suman Katpalia, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Indusind Bank. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, and thank you for joining the call. Let me start with some macro commentary, and then get into bank-specific details. Indian economy delivered a robust quarter two real GDP, showing 7.6 percent YOY growth. And RBI raising the financial year 24 growth forecast markedly to 7 percent. Economic activity sustained momentum in quarter three, supported by resilient urban demand and gradual turnaround in rural demand. Investment activity continues to be aided by buoyancy in the public sector capex. Financial markets and banking system conditions largely remain stable. Bank credit growth remains steady around 16 percent, while growth in deposit picked up around 12 to 14 percent. reducing the gap between them liquidity in the banking system turned into a net deficit shrinking with the withdrawal of pandemic era monetary accommodation by the rbi looking ahead private consumption should gain support from gradual improvement in rural demand strengthening of manufacturing activity and continued buoyancy in services government thrust on infrastructure spending and expected momentum in private capex should drive investment activity Coming to quarter specific development during the quarter we had some excellent achievements as well as some misses on the positive the retail deposit mobilizing one of the best in several quarters with moderate increase in the cost of deposits the loan growth was broad based across retail segments and with the visibility from market camping was ne- as never seen before key profitability metrics like nims ppop margin ro etc was healthy on the miss We saw slippages on the higher side than expected, and we are working towards normalizing in this quarter. Overall, we had many positives in quarter three, and aim to make it a better in quarter four. Robust growth loan uh, loan growth momentum. We witnessed another quarter of strong retail growth at 24% YOY, which drove the overall loan growth of 20% for the bank. Retail saw healthy momentum across vehicles, microfinance, and consumer segments. We were selective in corporate loan growth at 15%, focusing on mid and small corporates. Retail deposit accretion gaining pace. We saw one of the starkest sequential improvements in the share of retail deposit as per LCR of around 1% in one quarter. Our retail deposit grew 5% quarter on quarter despite the challenging liquidity environment. We are now touching the PC6 ambition of 45 to 50% retail as per LCR with still couple of years to go. The increase in cost of deposit was was moderated at nine basis points quarter on quarter. Progress on new initiatives. Our digital banking offering Indi is seeing strong traction, aided by increased awareness via our marketing campaigns. Indi now has four million downloads and eight hundred thousand customers executing four million transactions a month. We continue to scale our liability initiatives of affluent and NRI banking with deposits growing at 20 and 29 percent YOY respectively. Our home loan grew by 37 percent quarter on quarter and now stands at 1,307 crores. Asset quality: Our gross and net NPA remain steady at 1.92 percent and 0.7 percent respectively. Gross slippages. were at 1765 crores and net slippages were at 1236 crores the slippages in in vehicle book were impacted by adverse weather conditions towards the end of last quarter since they have already started showing since then they have already started showing improvement our restructured book continues to run down at 0.48% compared to 0.54% quarter on quarter Healthy earnings stability. Our net interest margin remains stable at 4.29 percent sequentially. Our other income grew by 15 percent YOY, driven by granular retail business. We continue to invest in human capital, physical and digital infrastructure, as well as marketing initiative, resulting in a OPEX growth of 6 percent 
Our PPOP margin to loans remains steady at 5.2 percent. Overall, our profit after tax grew by 5 percent quarter on quarter, 17 percent year on year to 2,301 crores. Our capital adequacy remains healthy, with CT1 at 16.07 percent and overall CRAR at 17.86 percent. Now coming to individual businesses. Vehicle finance. Our vehicle finance business continued robust growth momentum with highest ever disbursements in a history of 13,700 crores, growing 7% quarter on quarter. The cumulative nine-month financial year 24 disbursements at 38,380 crores were up 15% year on year. As a result, vehicle growth, vehicle loan growth remained healthy at 20% YOY and 5% quarter on quarter. Within vehicle categories, cars, Utility vehicles, construction equipment saw more than 15% quarter-on-quarter growth in disbursements. Two-wheeler segment also saw healthy growth in disbursements with demand picking up on the back of improving rural segments and festive season. Commercial vehicles and three-wheeler disbursements were slower quarter-on-quarter driven by lower industry volumes. We have, however, maintained our market share across the segments. We have doubled our auto loan book in the last two years with market share now close to 4%. This has helped us balancing the vehicle loan book between commercial and passenger seg segment de-risking cyclicality. The gross slippages in vehicle finance were at 0.73% versus 0.93% year on year and 0.64% quarter on quarter. The slippages moved up sequentially due to adverse unseasonal weather in December, such as floods in southern southern side as well as heavy fog in the northern side, impacting collections to some extent. The situation has since then improved, and we have already seen a t turnaround of 10% in the quarter three slippages getting upgraded in a couple of weeks in January. We expect to see this momentum continuing for the rest of the quarter four, resulting in normalization of these temporary slippages. The restructured book in vehicle finance reduced to, reduced to 705 crores from 910 crores quarter on quarter with majority of the reduction due to upgrades and recoveries. Overall, our vehicle portfolio is now diversified across product categories and we are well positioned for sustainable growth across different product cycles. This could also be evident from this quarter's number where despite the sequential softness in MSCV segment, we maintain a robust growth momentum. Bharat Financial uh, Inclusion Limited. Vehicle distribution is now running at its potential capacity with outstanding loan book originated at Rs. 40,544 crores, growing 24% year on year. The growth was robust in microfinance as well as merchant acquiring business at 20 and 55% year on year respectively. We have been cautious of growing the book balance between new customer acquisition without excess excessively leveraging the customer ticket sizes. Our active loan clients now stand at 9.4 million, reflecting a growth of 17% year-on-year and 4% quarter-on-quarter. Microfinance. Our microfinance business continued momentum with year-on-year -year growth, improving to 20% from 16% last quarter. Our average loan outstanding per customer reduced by 1% quarter-on-quarter, and we were cautious with elections in a few last days last quarter. Our net slippages improved to 0.55% versus 1.24% year-on-year and 57 basis point, 0.57% quarter-on-quarter. MFI standard net collection efficiency in quarter 3 was at 98.6% and our early delinquency buckets are better than the industry. Bara Supershop, the merchant acquiring business. Our merchant loan stood at 4,783 crores with 55% year-on-year growth. The loan book reduced by 2% sequentially with focus on collections and average loan outstanding reducing from 70K to 68K per customer quarter on quarter. The standard net book collection from this client base stood at 99.1%. Bharat Money Store's Kirana Shop model. We have around 61,000 active Bharat Money Stores providing banking at the doorstep in remote areas. We continuously work towards converting inactive stores to into active or close them if not successful over a period. Liability book stores from these customer service to will increase by 56% year on year to reach 2,541 crores. The customer base of 16.7 million accounts also registered an increase of 24% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. 
Overall, we will continue the growth momentum during the quarter, which augurs well for the overall bank's profitability. We are well placed to participate in the large rural opportunity with our deep distribution network while transforming from microfinance to microbanking. <clears throat> global diamond and jewelry business. The business continues to maintain its global leadership position. The growth, however, has been an issue for several quarters due to global macro challenges. <laughs> The portfolio has degrown by 8% quarter on quarter and now contributes to 3% of the overall loan book. The asset quality never, nevertheless remains healthy with no SMA1, SMA2 or restructured account. Corporate Bank We continue to grow our corporate bank in a calibrated manner with focus on areas of competitive advantage rather than chasing headline growth numbers. The overall corporate growth was of 15% year-on-year, continues to be led by mid- and small corporates growing at 17% year-on-year and 3% quarter-on-quarter. Within this, small corporates grew by 5% quarter-on-quarter driven by seasonal uplift in the agri-portfolio during the quarter. Growth in large corporates was at 2% quarter-on-quarter and 14% year-on-year in line with our expectations. Specialized work verticals outside the diamond business, business constitute 31% of the corporate book. This includes real estate, financial services, food and agri, education and healthcare. The exposure under specialized work verticals is managed well basis sector specific strategy. The segment continue to show healthy risk adjusted returns and growth profiles. The proportion of A and above rated customers has improved to 77% versus 74% year-on-year, year, with weighted average rating improving to 2.54 from 2.64 Y over. The net slippages in corporate book were at 155 crores versus 158 crore quarter quarter. The slippage was mainly due to one stress account of Rs. 140 crores. Overall, nine-month annualized slippages has reduced to 25 basis points versus 45 basis points last year, showing healthy improvement and range-bound credit costs in the corporate book. Overall, we continue to progress on building corporate bank franchise focused on selective areas of competitive advantage with granular risk profile. We remain comfortable with the overall asset quality trends in corporate segment considering the improvement made in risk profile and granularity of the portfolio. Other retail assets. Other retail assets remain the fastest growing segment within the overall portfolio with 30% year-on-year and 6% quarter-on-quarter growth. Our MSME book under business banking is at 15,800 crores, with grow, which grew 24% year-on-year and 3% quarter-on-quarter. And lab book maintain a steady traction with 10% year-on-year and 3% quarter-on-quarter growth. We have redefined our MSME branches with enhanced capability and upscaling of the branch staff with this, we have already started seeing some green shoots in the down, downstream metrics like branch leads, login, etc. We will continue to focus on MSME as one of our growth engines with tighter and onboarding norms. We have put in place a robust early warning signal framework, which is enabling us with timely triggers to he ensure healthy asset quality. Home loan product continues to scale with loan book now at 1,377 crores as of December 23 growing at 37% quarter-on-quarter. Share of unsecured loans remains at 5 to 5.5% and we aim to maintain it range-bound around current levels. Credit card growth was driven by new card acquisition and strong spend. We recorded healthy spends of 25,444 crores, growing by 15% quarter-on-quarter. Our spend market share has further improved to 5% as per latest available RBI data. Overall, we are focused on growing our consumer assets while improving the balance towards secure mix and scale of our home loan. <coughs> now coming to liabilities. We mobilized retail deposits as per LCR of Rs. 8,200 crores in quarter 3, making it the best quarterly accretion since the beginning of the upward interest rate cycle. This translates into retail as per LCR growth of 20% YOY and 5% quarter on quarter. The share of retail deposits improved from 43.7% to 44.8% during the quarter, again one of the big best achievements in the last several quarters. Retail deposits contribute, con contributed over 75% of the incremental deposit during growth during the quarter. We continue to let go non-retail deposits 
Example share certificates, share of certificates of deposits reduced from 3% to 2.5% quarter on quarter. As a result, our overall deposit growth was 13% YOY and 3% quarter on quarter. The deposit growth also came along with moderate increase in the cost of deposits of 9 basis points in line with the communication earlier. CASA ratio remains stable at 38.5% quarter on quarter. We would be one of the few banks seeing an accretion in absolute savings account book. The accretion is driven mainly by continued focus on our customer acquisition as well as new launches such as Indus Grande in quarter 2 and Indus Solitaire in quarter 3. Indus Solitaire is the first of our community focused relationship product aimed to leverage a strong position in the gems and jewelry segment. During the quarter, as many of you would have seen, we did a massive marketing campaign associating with the ICC World Cup in India. We reached over 1.25 million fans in the stadium and over 520 million viewers via television coverage throughout the tournament. The initiative was instrumental in improving our visibility as per independent survey by 1.5 times and we could see the benefits continuing in the up upcoming couple of cricketing events scheduled later this year. We also added 97 branches during the quarter, taking a branch count to 2,728. We remain on track and committed to add around 1,000 branches during this three-year period. We continue to scale up our initiatives on Affluent and NRI during the quarter. Affluent segment grew 20% year-on-year to 50,200 50, crores during the quarter. Affluent AEM, AUM was 16% year-on-year to 77,100 crores. NR deposit grew 29% year-on-year and 6% quarter-on-quarter at 42,300 crores. Our market share in the non-resident segment stands at 3.3% as per last, latest, last available data, where it was 2.9% here. Share of borrowing in total liability was at 8%. The borrowings continue to be oriented towards long source of funds, long term source of funds. Our liquidity position remained healthy during the quarter with average LCR improving to 122% versus 117% quarter on quarter and average surplus liquidity at Rs 39,500 crores for the quarter. Overall, we are making steady progress towards deposit retailization journey amidst the challenging liquidity environment. We continue to believe in our physical and segmental and segmental strategy and with consistent constant investments in traditional digital and new initiative we remain comfortable in achieving our deposit growth ambitions digital traction during the quarter the bank offered officially launched ND coinciding with the campaign and ran through the cricket world cup ND brings a revolutionary way to bank with many industry first within a short span of launch Bank has acquired more than 8.8 .8 million customers on the platform and close to 4 million installed base. We continue to see momentum on Indy with 5 accounts being opened every minute, with 1 transaction every second. Engagement is increasing steadily with users as, as we are nearing doubling the number of transactions month on month and active clients do as much as 35 to 40 transactions per month. Further, it is an earned model and it is in the philosophy that underpins the digital business and not a burn model and with asset power already integrated in the platform such as line of credit. We plan to keep expanding the product suite on India and migrating of existing clients desirous of moving to India as a platform we will also start soon. We also have seen, we have also have credit cards, wealth management, NRI and MSME preposition uphold on India, each with many industry first. On the existing platform, bank continue to see scale-up of user engagement. On Indus Mobile, user base increased 23% year-on-year, which is more interesting is that there was an increase of 15% of users who are monthly active on the app. So, greater proportion of our users are now active every month on the platform. Merchant apps saw a user base nearly double YOY, and during the quarter, we enabled video KYC, let self-oblique remote aim onboarding ability on the app for MSME clients. The digital business model continues to scale and remote do-it-yourself led by business now contributes significantly to our retail and MSME business. 56% of our savings account are now acquired in remote do-it-yourself digital manner by customers. 
फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ आर डिपॉजिट टर्म डिपॉजिट कस्टमर्स आर रिक्वायर्ड द सेम वे फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ आर पर्सनल लोन एंड थर्टी थ्री परसेंट एंड ऑफ दैट थर्टी थ्री परसेंट इज फ्री अप्रूव बाई लादर ट्वेल्व परसेंट इज रियल टाइम एडजस्टेशनिंग एनेबल्ड ट्वेंटी टू परसेंट ऑफ आर क्रेडिट क्रेडिट कार्ड आर रिक्वायर्ड इन द सेम मैनर और वाया पार्टनरशिप थ्रू ओपन एपीआई टैक्स प्रोग्राम इन एम एस एम ई बिजनेस सेवन परसेंट ऑफ आर करंट अकाउंट आर नॉ रिमोट डू इट योर सेल्फ एंड डिजिटल एंड मोर देन टू हर ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ अनसिक्योर बिजनेस लोन्स आर अक्वायर्ड द सेम वे नॉ कमिंग टू द फाइनेंशियल परफॉर्मेंस फॉर द क्वार्टर नेट इंटरेस्ट इनकम ग्रू बाय एटीन परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर एंड फोर परसेंट क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर विथ नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन रिमेनिंग स्टेबल एट फोर पॉइंट टू नाइन परसेंट सीक्वेंशली वाइल इंप्रूविंग बाई टू परसेंट बेसिस पॉइंट वर्सेज फोर पॉइंट टू सेवन The net interest margin was supported by moderate increase in the cost of deposit of nine basis point and was offset offset by the increase in yield of advances by fifteen basis point. The repricing on the loan as well as the mixed changes in favor of retail is helped us improving the yield on advances. Our cost of deposit at six point four four percent increased by nine basis points quarter on quarter in line with our expectations. We have now been in an elevated rate environment for 18 to 20 months now, and we are now in the last phase of deposit repricing, assuming stable rate environment. Our other income grew by 15% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter. Core client fee, excluding trading income, too grew by 12% year on year. Our non-core fee income was 231 crores during the quarter. Our total revenue for the quarter was. 7,692 crores, with 17% year-on-year growth. The OPEX growth of 6% quarter-on-quarter was driven by continued investment in human capital, distribution network, and marketing initiatives. The bank employee base grew by 5% quarter-on-quarter. We have also opened 97 branches in quarter three versus 25 branches in half one financial year 24. The operating profit for the quarter was at rupees 4,042 crore, growing 10% year on year. On the asset quality and provisioning front, the annualized provision for quarter three has come down to 119 basis point versus 156 basis point year on year. Annualized nine-month financial year 24 provisions to loan ratio was at 120 basis point versus 169 basis point year on year. As explained earlier, net slippage was sequentially impacted by vehicle finance, since, which is since then normalizing. The restructured book reduced during the quarter from 0.4 percent to 0.48 percent, with bulk of the reduction due to upgrades and recoveries. The net security receipts have further reduced to 37 basis points from 39 basis points in the previous quarter. The bank made additional provision of 165 crores towards the SR book during the quarter. Overall GNP is at 1.92 percent and net NP is at 0.57 percent. Was steady for the quarter. We maintain a provision coverage ratio of 71 percent. We used contingent provision during the quarter as we expected reduction in the stress book, including that of a telco exposure. Our SMA one and SMA two book collectively is now only 19 basis points. We have nevertheless not changed our view of continuously adding into the buffer ahead of the. Cyclical impact, if any. Total loans related provisions are at 2.2 percent of loans and 114 percent of gross NPS. Profit after tax for the quarter was at 2,301 crores, growing 5 percent quarter on quarter and 17 percent year on year. Our return ratio saw sequential improvement with return on assets at 1.93 percent and return on equity at 15.45 percent for quarter three. Our CRAR, including profits, remain healthy at 17.86 percent. This reflects impact on a recent RBI circular on risk weights, and adjusted for that, CRAR improved quarter on quarter. Overall, as mentioned at the beginning of the call, we had quite a few positive during the quarter. While some of the improvement which we are focusing on priority for this and the next few quarters, the retail deposit growth. Has been a bright spot with the CAGR of 20% since the interest rate cycle change. We are in sight of a PC6 target of retailization and will aim towards the upper end of 45 to 50% ambition over the next couple of years. The retail growth too 
now is quite diversified and with all the key businesses of vehicle microfinance and consumer growing upwards of 20 percent with, with further boosters from new initiatives the asset quality while better than last year has a potential for further improvement we are already seeing improvements this quarter so far and we'll aim to deliver a better a better quarter four the in investments in the new initiative branding physical and digital business continues as we have preferred investing for future over near term earnings the net interest margins have been stable throughout the challenge times and we expect support once the interest rate cycle turns the ro and ro profile thus has potential for improvement as we see benefits from, from nims cost to income as well as credit cost coming over the next few quarters with this we can open the floor for questions and answers Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. The participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one. to ask the question the first question is from the line of chintan joshi from autonomous please go ahead hi can you hear me am i audible yes yeah thank you uh uh so uh could you help us uh, think about the asset quality risks around the upcoming election you know if you could el elaborate on the experience around the recent state elections or past elections and how we should think about uh, uh, any risks uh, that might come uh, forth in the coming months so so i think this is a much debated topic that election creates delinquency it does not we seen this in our vehicle finance as well as in microfinance that unless and until there is political activism it never it never creates a delinquencies uh, to that extent and i think uh, the state government also don't promote uh, to a large extent uh, a state in, uh, in 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 increasing of delinquencies as as we said we have a diversified portfolio in these areas and we we do not we have no concentration risk to be bothered about that as we go along okay fine I Okay, uh, and then uh, the second question is: uh, Could you help us uh, think about uh, the evolution of lending margins? So, if I compare, uh, you know, lending yields to repo rate development, how have they developed in the different products? And given the deposit competition, the funding pressures, do you think lending margins can increase uh, uh, over the coming months or quarters? So, so let me let me. I think uh, we've always said that our margins, lending margins, will be between 4.2 to 4.3 percent, and uh, it's the mix of the balance sheet which makes us most stable in our lending margins. So, if you look at uh, how we managed our lending margins, and we've we've heard that uh, our lending margins will go down. I think uh, if you look at the last four to six quarters, we've been very steady between 4.2 and 4.3. and we continue to believe that we will remain steady that the overall margin I, i was more a you know just wanted to get some color on kind of you know uh, the headline rates that you offer on different products uh, uh, you know uh, can do they have room to increase given the deposit competition i i don't think uh, the rates are market driven i don't think you can uh, you can define the rates and you can increase the rate corporate rates are all eblr linked and the offset the, the offset margins are already fixed unless and until you see a deterioration in the risk profile of the client <laughs> on the fixed rate book i think uh, you it's it's more competitive driven and we don't want to increase rates in microfinance unnecessarily just to increase the rate so i think uh, as the interest rates are stabilizing in the deposit side and we are seeing the last a few quarter one maybe one more quarter of uh, interest of increasing deposit cost cost of deposit i think you should not increase the lending rate in the in the in the market right now thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kunal shah from city group please go ahead 
Ya, hai teman. Ada yang ada tu ah slip aja so quite uh, high run rate of 2.2 or percent. Uh, you indicated the uh, uh, vehicle finance, but again that seems to be somewhere around the uh, uh, 600 odd crores. So what are the other segments? Maybe we were always targeting thousand, one thousand two hundred crores of slippage, and this time it's even more than seventeen uh, hundred odd crores. Uh, so besides uh, vehicle, also it seems there is further stress besides uh, vehicle as well as corporate. Uh, and how should we uh, look at it? Yeah. So the, in the corporate, the slippages of last quarter were two hundred fourteen. They were three hundred twelve this this quarter. Sixty seven crores got upgraded within the quarter itself. Uh, it was a miss and it got upgraded and we had to show it as a as a slippage and then it got upgraded and 135 or 140 crore came from a from a normal account you know which we had said earlier that there were two accounts one of them got into last quarter and this and this quarter we took another 140 crore so i think that's the end of the corporate slippages and 80 75 to 80 crore is a normal bau business in the business banking or in the sme business so that's what it is On the other retail, I think uh, we saw two slippages coming in. Agri businesses had a 25 crore extra slippage. Uh, I think uh, we saw a slippage in the in the in the lap where I think three accounts, uh, which were a uh, seemingly large accounts, about 40 crore slipped into into that. And I think the merchant acquiring business had a 30 crore extra slippage. So that was the reason for the for the other retail to go up. MFI remained steady. And CFD, of course, I told you that it was steady. So I think if you look at our business, I I I am very confident that we should come back to 1200. I think MFI was a little, uh, this uh, and CFD was a bit of a shocker. We were aware of the corporate. You should see corporate bank going back to about 50 to 75 crores is what we feel. I think other retail uh, will remain steady at about 300, 350 crores, and I think MFI should go down to another by. 75 crores to 275 to 300 crores, and CFD should also be very steady going forward. So I think we, what we gave as a commitment of 1100, 1200, should come in in the in in the next few quarters. Okay, but uh, this uh, lap and uh, agree that doesn't seem to be more seasonal. So even in other retail as um, uh, other retail assets, you are saying it, that run rate will continue. No, no, no. Besides, besides the CFD, there doesn't seem to be any one-offs, or uh, because less. I don't know. Maybe in terms of the uh, quality of the portfolio, uh, this might continue. This is just one-off of. Uh, Uh, on lab is a one off we didn't want to negotiate with the customer the customer was asking for a settlement we have a we have the properties we didn't want to we didn't want to do a a settlement at that point of time we could have avoided the the the, the flow but we did not want to do that and uh, uh, so we i don't think this will come i think uh, even the corporate is a one off uh, which we we knew that it will come and you see the corporate going down dramatically Okay, and lastly, in terms of contingency, so again, last quarter we clearly said that we will not uh, utilize contingency and in fact start creating contingency from 4Q. That still doesn't seem to be happening. We have uh, further utilized 220 odd crores. So if we start creating contingency, how confident we are in terms of the guidance of 1.1 to 1.3 percent credit cost, uh, given it's still running quite high. No, you're right. Uh, I think you know this is one of the misses which we've had this quarter. We wanted to may build the contingency, but there is some positive news also. The positive news is that we had created for one big account the contingency provision, and we believe that we are going to get paid hopefully by February 8th. So that provision may get released as a consequence, and we will not use it, and we will keep it aside. And I think we will add to the contingency. Uh, more as as and when we think that it is required, we will we will not deter away from adding to contingency, and we continue to believe that even if we add 200 300 crores to contingency, we will still come between 110 to 130 basis points in our credit cost for the for the year. Okay. Okay. Any particular period when we would start creating search in the like you said as and when required? I don't want to give a any any guidance because I tell you I missed my guidance this quarter on this. 
Okay. So I don't know. So I think uh, just I'm just waiting for the gross flows to come back, and I think gross flows is a big indicator that I want to see eleven yeah. hundred to twelve hundred crores. But that's a miss on our side, and I think uh, I acknowledge it. But I also think that this is a very temporary, and it will get back this quarter. You will see the improvement this quarter. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question and congrats on the quarter. Uh, just going beyond asset quality, can you talk a bit about vehicle finance demand? Uh, I believe it was a bit weak during the festival season, but uh, what are the trends looking like uh, post the festival season? So, uh, uh, while I'll answer the main question, I think I'll have Shriram address this issue uh, but let me let me first address i think uh, if you look at our book we de-risk ourselves by going in for diversification as a strategy so we are not dependent on the mscv or any one part category of vehicles to go our book now and if you look at the book split you will see a very diversified book in fact we almost doubled our auto loan book car loan book over a period of last two years so i think uh, a well diversified book and not dependent on one single category of vehicle will help us achieve a 20% year on year growth however on the vehicle side on the how the market is and how the market is behaving i think uh, i have shriram address this issue shriram hi good evening uh, mcv is uh, not looking very strong like mcv the uh, business is looking very very dull this uh, quarter but we are looking at used commercial vehicle to balance it out and uh, we are increasing our uh, market share in auto loans and uh, used car is another uh, area we are focusing on these are the three areas like where we think we should be able to make up the same numbers as the last quarter nearly 14000 crores is what we are expecting and the uh, main growth will come from auto loans and uh, used commercial vehicle the uh, industry as such like uh, as the uh, uh, election is coming there should be a bit of a dullness in both mhcv lcv and the uh, tractor has been going slow for the last 2 3 quarters so everything is looking very dull but uh, we should be able to make up with the uh, auto loan and uh, used commercial vehicle okay okay uh, thanks for that uh, secondly just on microfinance npls and i know this quarter we had the floods in tamil nadu but in general our npls have been quite stubbornly high at 4 4 and a half percent so really what what are the remedial actions you are taking there to uh, get it back to earlier levels of 2% yeah it's related to the gross flows but if you look at the net flow on the on the mfi business you will see that the net flow in the mfi business is only 189 crores uh, in 100 189 crores versus 182 crores last quarter so i think uh, there is an upgrade process which is which happens in the mfi business i think the gross flow is is a bit higher and we don't give top of loans to stop the gross flow from coming in i we don't believe in giving top up or any extra loans and i think uh, one of the reasons why i said that uh, our, our our gross flows will be higher but our credit cost will be between 2 and 1/2 to 3% in the microfinance business i don't think a microfinance business can run at 100 120 basis point credit cost And just the last question uh, uh, on World Cup spend. Can you just quantify it? And uh, you also mentioned you will be continuing cricket sponsorships this year. So, so we have, uh, we have, uh, as part of the deal, we got, uh, we've got the T20 World Cup as well as the Under 19 uh, uh, World Cup. Uh, I can't talk about the cost because it's a confidential matter. On the agreement is very confidential. But I can assure you that the benefit the bank is deriving out of this. Okay, uh, 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 project and sponsorship is much higher than the cost which we are incurring. Okay, because we are now last couple of quarters running at forty-seven, forty-eight percent cost to income. So, is that a fair number to uh, continue with over the next two, three quarters till the at least these World Cups are done? I think uh, the good way to look at it would be that uh, forty-five to forty-six percent in quarter one. going down to 45 uh, 45% in uh, quarter 3 uh, quarter 3 and then we should stabilize the bank should stabilize in year 3 at 41 to 43% so 
Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, thanks for this and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Murarka from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, Suman. Good evening. Uh, Abhishek, question. sorry, but your audio is not coming clear. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Thank you. Uh, hi, Suman. Good evening. Uh, so, my question is on uh, the series. Abhishek, sorry, but once again we are losing your audio. Uh, okay, let me join back with you then. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Param from Namora. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my first question is on uh, uh, Sumanth. Uh, we've seen an improvement in LCR for the bank in this quarter. Obviously, we've been doing well on retail deposits. But uh, on this, between LCR and LDR, you know, uh, we are at we, we are at about an 89 percent LDR. Uh, is there any thought process on uh, bringing that down, or um, you know, any uh, nudge from the regulator uh, in, in that aspect? Not at all. I think if you look at our LDR a CD ratio. Whole, we are in line with the banking industry. In fact, some people are at 95, 96. We've always said that we will be between 86 to 90, and we've maintained our stance at that level. So we've not got any anything from the regulator on this, a nudge from the regulator on this one. I think, uh, um, so please, uh, I think the bank is highly liquid, and I think we've been able to manage its CD ratio between 86 to 90, and we'll never bust the 90%. Perfect. That's very clear. Uh, my second question is on the uh, so uh, on this credit card portfolio. So if I look at the data, uh, so it's about it's almost doubled over the last um, uh, two years. So are we seeing how, what are we seeing in terms of trends in write-offs here? Uh, are we seeing any uh, increase or anything to be worried about? Well, not really. I think uh, the credit card business will run at 250 to 300 basis points of credit card and. Because we have an overall earning of about 28 to 30 percent in credit card, including the fees. So are we are very comfortable with the way we run and manage our business. Of course, sir, there is a little bit of elevation in the flows which is happening, but it does get moderated at 90 DPD to some extent. And if you see our data and compare it with the TransUnion, I think we are we are in line with the competition in the TransUnion database, and uh, I think we are plus minus 10% at L all points of time in the in the credit cost as far as the industry is concerned. Okay, okay. Uh, one more question, if I can squeeze in. You mentioned the net slippages in microfinance and vehicle finance, about, uh, I think, 05 and 0.7%. So these are not annualized numbers, right? These are... No, no, these are quarterly numbers. Quarterly, quarterly. Okay, okay, got it. So they, these are the bulk of the net slippages in the consumer finance business. Uh, excluding this, it's, it's marginal. Now, I think the consumer finance business saw slippages in the in the in the microfinance side and in the in the vehicle side, and some in the other retail side, specifically in the merchant acquiring side, we saw some slippages. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks so much, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, so, so one question on the liability franchise. Uh, like, uh, just uh, wanted your thoughts as to how do you really see the sensitivity of deposit inflow to the premium deposit rates that the bank offer? Like, uh, how, how much of correlation is there? And so hypothetically, so to increase the premium a bit, do you expect the inflows to improve significantly? See, it's very difficult to say. So there are some mid-sized banks or smaller banks which have given a higher deposit rate and have increased their uh, their deposit base. So I think uh, there is some sensitivity which clients put on to higher deposit rates in to get that. But it happens at the in the in the very high end of the of the business, which is about half ten crores and above. In my opinion, I think uh, it is better. To continue to push client acquisitions and do it, of course, uh, uh, you play it in certain specific segments to get the deposit rate because I think NRI segment, for example, you offer a, a little bit more in the US dollar deposit, but you get get the savings account at a very uh, uh, attractive rate and then you hedge the 
the whole thing, the cost of deposit is exactly the same. So there is some sensitivity at the higher end, in the top end to the rates, but I don't think that's the only way to run the run the deposit franchise because it becomes because these are the type of guys unless you lock them in they will also take the money out at any point of time okay and so the bank has been benefiting like every quarter from the improvement in lending yields and the asset mix is getting better with rising mix of retail so do you plan to like uh, flow back these gains into, into the uh, building of the deposit franchise or will, will you let it pass on to the margins in the coming years I'm not able to understand the question. No, the, the question is like the benefit from the lending yield improvement, which has been continuously happening at the bank, and the asset mix is getting better with the rising mix of retail. Will you let that pass on the benefit be passed on to the deposit premium and increase that or compete there, or will you let the benefit flow down to the margins? So, so the way to look at it is, are we competitive? enough competitive in the liability market and are we compromising on the granularization journey we will not compromise on the granularization journey irrespective of the margins so let me let me be very candid about it and i think uh, we want to in increase our granularization journey and we will never never go and we want to be competitive which we mean that we will be always be 52 45 to so 50 to 75 basis points higher than the industry in the in our deposit rates and that's what we've been doing uh, will do you see a margin uptake from here i said that uh, we are at 4.2 to 4.3 and we will continue to remain at that level for some time till the time we achieve a certain amount of granularization which we can uh, we can then say that we can uh, we can increase our margins and i think that should happen when the interest rate reduction cycle happens, and that will be from the second half of next year, not before that. Next fiscal, you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure. Thanks, Oman. This is very helpful. Thanks so much. I wish you all the best. <coughs> Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Suman. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, a, uh, sir, um, two data keeping questions and then one question is uh, if you can uh, tell the net security receipts uh, for the bank or the gross and the provisions there. Yeah, so uh, uh, <coughs> net security receipt is uh, 37 basis points. The gross number is 2378 crores and net is 1211 crores. So the net is how much, sir? 1211, 1211 crores. Sure, sure. Uh, second question, sir, on cost to income, right? So earlier we were operating in a very uh, tight range. And in the last two quarters, I think it has uh, increased a little bit. So uh, assuming the margins remain flat or flattish, and the growth remains more or less here. How should one uh, look at cost to income uh, from a long-term perspective? Thank you. So I think in the long-term uh, perspective, we said that next year we should be between 45 and 46 percent, and going down to 41 to 43 percent in the in the next two years, because we believe that the operating leverage of all our investments will come through at that point of time. And this is even you would keep moving towards retail, right? Because yes. that is ideally... Yes. But we will never have a book of more than 55 to 57% retail at any point of time. Understood. Understood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manish Shukla from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, NBFC is one of our large segments. Any change in strategy there after the risk rate assets uh, changes done by RBI? Guidelines on risk rate. So I think uh, we've always said that our unsecured business, uh, specifically on credit card and personal loans, will not be, it's an internal guideline which we found, will not be ending to NBFC. Any change after more than five to five and a half percent, and and in NBFCs, 
We've uh, we've always been lower than the industry is at five five and a half percent, where the industry is at eight percent of the loan book. So we've always always been very cautious about our lending to NBFCs, and we've never had an issue. And our A rated paper, our, our NBFCs are ninety percent of them are A rated paper and above. Ninety five. Okay, so essentially, I'm. All I'm first trying to understand is compared to how you are doing the business till end of October and how you do it today. Is there any? I, I think yes. So we are we are cautious about the risk weights, and I think uh, the pricing has increased a little bit. But it doesn't mean that we'll stop our business. So why would you not lend to a Sundram or will you not lend to an XYZ company, which is important? You will lend to the right uh, right uh, candidates. Sure. Uh, and uh, this, there has been some impact on capital at 16%. CT1 is still comfortable, but just wanted to get your thoughts around how you're thinking about uh, capital and where you would uh, like the minimum resource to be for that. So we said that we will uh, we will raise capital before we touch 14% CT1. And I think uh, we said that uh, last three quarters ago that it will take about we are comfortable for six to eight quarters. So I think. Uh, in the mid of next financial year is when you will start seeing that we will assess whether we need it. We are not in a hurry. Our risk weight assets are falling, and I think we should be able to manage within the risk weight assets. And our, our internal accruals are enough to manage our growth right now. Yeah, thank you. Those are the questions. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Saurabh Kumar from J P Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, sir, just two questions. One is, uh, what will be the 30 plus overdue book in the microfinance business? That's first. And uh, second, uh, you know, on your balance sheet, <coughs> if you have this trend that your loans are growing 20%, uh, assets are only growing 10%, how long do you think this trend, you know, sustains? Do you think this normalizes when your asset growth starts mirroring loan growth or the other way? So first, let me answer. Yeah. I think the MFI uh, 30 to 90 DPD is uh, 1.6, uh, 1.7 percent. 30 to 90 DPD. And uh, Govind, do you want to answer? Yeah. Asset growth and uh, loan growth. When does it normalize? Does it normalize ever? No. People also the convergence, I'm saying the asset growth is 20%. Uh, sorry, asset growth is 10%. Advances is 20%. Yeah, uh, Govind is our CFO. He'll answer that question. Uh, uh, liability, uh, asset growth versus this loan growth. Yeah, so it's like uh, we have a mix of investment, uh, loans, and uh, other assets. So it's kind of mixed depending on the liquidity we have to maintain, the investment book, SLR requirement. And depending on the loan growth opportunity. Yeah, so to answer your question, loan growth will be higher than our our uh, investments growth. If that's your, what your question is, because those are two major contributors <coughs> of your asset side of the balance sheet. So uh, will it converge ever? He's asking the question. Now. Not necessarily. It will not necessarily converge. Okay. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shudrancho Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Shubrancho, may I request to unmute your line and go ahead with the question, please? Shubrancho, can you hear us? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So, uh, sir, my first question is around the vehicle finance book. I uh, just wanted to understand how many people uh, we deploy here in terms of sales, credit, and uh, collection specifically for vehicle finance. And what would be a ballpark ROA for this book uh, on a steady state basis? The second question is on uh, slide 37, we give, uh, give out the uh, sourcing of uh, credit cards and other products. Specifically about credit cards, so just wanted to understand what is the actual cost of acquisition when we do a remote digital versus an assisted digital, the actual cost of acquisition for cards. So if you look at the remote digital, which is the where the cost of a credit card 
where a customer do it does it directly there is no cost associated with the cost of acquisition it's about 150 to 200 whatever you spend on the advertising and that that's what it is however if you look uh, do a do a partnership based model uh, on the on the card uh, which is also directly remote digital uh, it, you have a cost of 2800 rupees for the card 2500 rupees for the card and if you look at a dsa a dsa or a the uh, dsa based physical model you will have a cost of 3000 rupees for the card under thank you that was helpful and on the uh, vehicle finance part so on the vehicle finance i think uh, uh, we, while we don't give ros by segment i think uh, the number of people employed headcount in the headcount is 11000 11000 people are are deployed in the within our subsidiary company as well as in the bank to to do the to do the business 11 11 11 11 oh 11 understood and we expect to maintain the same level of disbursement going forward in fy 25 as well at the same run rate so i think what we said is for the next quarter we we said that we will do 14000 crore of disbursement and uh, let's see that uh, how the next year goes we we said that we want to grow the vehicle book by 20% to maintain it i think the disbursement may have to increase by 5 to 7 10% understood sir that was very helpful thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir next question is from the line of rakesh kumar from bnk securities please go ahead rakesh we are not able to hear you can you please come in a better reception area Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question. I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Suman Karpalia for closing comments. Uh, thank you for attending the call. Uh, uh, if there are any questions which are unanswered or you have specific queries, you can contact Indrajit and me at any point of time, and we will be able to assist or guide you towards any clarification which you may require. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. On behalf of Anderson Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.